time for classic circuits, you should know. Hey, what's happening, guys? Today, we are going to build a constant current source for driving an LED or another small current device. This will involve biasing an NPN transistor. Now, in my last transistor video, I was accused of doing it half-ass. So I want to assure all of you that I will be using my entire ass in the production of this video, and it is substantial. So let us begin. We have our LED, right? That's our LED. And we have our voltage rail. And we have our ground rail. In this case, our voltage is going to be 9 volts DC. That's just a that's just a common voltage to use, okay? Now, what we're going to do here is we are going to put our transistor here. on the cathode side of our LED and that will be tied to ground and our anode side will be tied to VCC this remember is our collector our emitter and our base so we need to bias that base and the way we're going to do that is with another diode. In this case, though, it is going to be the Zener diode. And it's going to be, I think it's 3.2 volts. Right? Yep. Oh, you know what I forgot? Our, e, our emitter resistor. If you don't put in an emitter resistor, you can very easily end up with a thermal runaway, and that's no good. So then we'll also have a biasing resistor here that we will call R1. So we've created a sort of voltage divider here. And the beauty of this is, as long as we are above our Zener voltage and the voltage drop, no matter what happens to the supply voltage, if it varies between, you know, 6 volts and 12 volts, that Zener is always going to keep us at this point right here. So, well, how do we find that point? Well, we find that point using just a, a simple little bit of math. So, the supply voltage, like I said, must be higher than the Zener voltage. We're also going to call this a RB, or biasing resistor. And the emitter current will be constant, because this is always constant. This voltage here, the ZV, the Zener voltage, is always going to be constant at 3.2 volts. So our emitter voltage is always, or our emitter current is always going to be the same. And if our emitter current is the same, well then, our collector current has to be the same as well. So our voltages have to be the same. Voltage at the emitter is equal to the Zener voltage minus the VBE, which of course is our drop. So, I'm not going to get into all the math in case I make a mistake and somebody decides they want to chew my butt out. But we have RE is going to be equal to VE divided by IE. I mean, what's that? That's Ohm's Law. Doesn't get much simpler than Ohm's Law, right? I will put a link to a calculator down below to do all the calculations for you. But the way this is going to work out is we are going to have our VB 
of 470 ohms and our RE of 220 ohms. Put that through the calculator or do the math yourself, whatever floats your boat. And we are going to end up with a base voltage of, of course, 3.2 because that's what our Zener is doing. We're going to have an emitter voltage of 2.5 and we are going to have an emitter current of about 11.6 and if our emitter current is 11.6 then of course you know we have our drop and all that so our uh, collector current is going to be 11.25 approximately don't get your panties in a twist let's put the circuit together and give it a try what do you say of course the forward voltage of your led is going to matter as well i calculated this out for a red led with a forward voltage about 1.8 to 1.9 i just rounded it up to two so we are going to go from our vcc with our anode. Then we need a transistor. In this case, we're going to use a 3904 transistor. Pins in the 3904 are emitter, base, and collector. One, two, three, as you're looking at the front of the transistor. If I can get it out of the doggone bag. So collector is pin three. Just going to spread these apart a little bit. There we go. Collector is pin 3. And we line that up with the cathode of our LED. Like so. Alright, next up we will install our emitter resistor. Just looking for a suitably sized jumper here yeah this one's too big dude, 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 that's a problem I can never find the jumper sizes I want but this will work these fine quality Chinese even breadboards that the pins don't always line up properly. So our emitter resistor is 220. I've only got 200. It's going to affect our current a tiny bit, but not much. So we shall install our emitter resistor such as that. Now we are halfway done. Now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take another jumper from the base of the transistor and just bring it out here somewhere where we can put things together nicely and neatly. I actually need to bring that down. So we do that. Now we need our Zener. These Zeners are good up to 500 milliwatts. So we shouldn't have too much of a problem. There we go, 3.3. What did I calculate? 3.2. Close enough for government work, right? And remember that our Zener must be reverse biased. That means the cathode facing VCC, and then our biasing resistor, which is the 470, 
can go like this. And that's it. Let's hook it up. Get the power supply wiring over here. Fire up the power supply. Set for 12 volts. We're going to bring it down here to 9. My power supply wiring is not quite long enough to reach over to the board in this position, so we'll just throw in a couple of DuPonts here to extend it out. And connect the power. And fire it up. So there's our LED nice and lit. And if I vary the voltage, we're at 9 volts now. Now there's 8. Now there's 10. There's back to 9. Let's put a current reading in here and check what it's actually doing its job. All right. So let's put an ammeter in series here. I'm going to shut off the power to the circuit. And just to make this really simple, I'm just going to take our LED and move it over a couple spots. And then we'll just stick a couple of uh, jumper wires in here. Like so. And like so, I'm using the same colors I used here, red and brown. So I keep things easy. We'll take our meter and we'll swamp over here to our milliamp microamp and amp setting. Try and get everything in the picture. That's always fun. Then we'll bring in our little mini grabbers. And hook that up like that. And power up the circuit. So my calculations were slightly off. We're getting 14.9, like 15 milliamps. I was looking for what? What did I say? 11.25, so I'm a couple milliamps off, no big deal. All right, let's change our voltage. There's nine volts, we'll go up to 10. 15.2, I mean, yeah, of course there's gonna be a very slight difference, but not much. Let's take it down to like seven volts. 14.5. So yeah, we're keeping within a milliamp of where we were. It's a cool circuit. It's a classic circuit. You should know it. And now you do. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to the patrons. Big thanks to you guys for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.